uh, every human at the core has this aspect of gratitude. There's some people, they're very ungrateful to other people. The reason is that they just start trying to act tough and they've kind of veiled themselves, they've veiled their inner self. One day, when they understand, when everything breaks around, they'll realize who really they should have been grateful to. Because it's there in the human being. Human beings have gratitude that can be brought up. Otherwise, we're going to be ungrateful. So let that gratitude come out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallama tasliman kathiran ila yawmiddin amma ba'd. Now, when we listen to the Qur'an, what should be the etiquette of listening to the Qur'an? That's what we want to look at. So, there's multiple etiquette. I'm going to cover a few of them today. What should be our state to get the best out of the Qur'an? Well, firstly, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we should, recite, uh, we should listen attentively. Because that is important. The, the verse I read is, listen carefully and be silent. That, that's the first etiquette. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised mercy on those who listen carefully you'll get mercy just be respectful and listen that's why ulama have said that you should not have you know like if you've got a shop or you're doing something you shouldn't have the quran playing in the background just as background music if you're not listening to it don't put it on okay now some people ask the question is that can i put it on in my house because i want the the shaitans to go away so can i can I put that? Now, of course, if nobody's there and you want to let the Qur'an play on a recording, that's okay. But if you're there, then you should be listening. If you want background sound, put something else on. Put a sheet on. Right? Don't, don't put down. Some people, in what they do in markets is that they play, they, they, they play Qur'an, but nobody listens. That's actually considered disrespectful. Number two, one should turn completely with all of his heart to the recitation and focus all of his feelings and senses to the recitation that he is listen, listening to. They say that if you're tired, then don't listen. Stop it. If you're tired, stop reading the Quran. If you're tired, stop making salat. There's no point forcing yourself in salat. Allah doesn't want that kind of worship. Allah doesn't need that kind of worship. You know, when we go to the haram, to Medina Munawwara and you're going to give salam to the Prophet ﷺ. They don't let you stay there for more than a few seconds anyway nowadays. But even if you get an opportunity, how long should you stand there and give salam to the Prophet ﷺ? Well, they say as long as you're focused. You're standing there giving salam. As long as you're focused, stand there. Don't stand there uh, for longer. Like, you know, if somebody comes to see you and they say what they have to say, you're busy. They, have, they say what they say. They've said what they said. Now they keep standing around. You're going to think, what are, you, what are you doing here? I'm not saying that's how the Prophet ﷺ thinks, but from our adab is like this. Because right? it's about giving salam to the Prophet ﷺ and conversing with him. When you've done that, you can go away. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, you just sit there with your hands up to Allah, but you're focused elsewhere, then that's not right. The dua should be focused. Make a small dua, but make it focused. So listen when you can and benefit from it. A person, should not, a person should get rid of everything that preoccupies him and diverts his attention. Playing, joking, fiddling, talking with others, smoking or anything else that diminishes the reverence on the phone. We're listening and we're on the phone. Just quickly check my email. Because all of this is like disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech. That's why. Number three. The third one you can only do if you got the meaning. So one should ponder and reflect on the meaning of the verses. And the strength of what should you ponder on? Now you can only do this if you know Arabic, this one that he's saying. Because uh, this is, you need to look at how beautiful the Arabic is. Also how Allah is delivering the message using those particular words. If you could understand that, you know how amazing that is. One of our great scholars, Malna Anwar Shah Kashmiri, Rahimahullah. He was so advanced. He'd probably done his tafsir and everything. So one Ramadan he spent, you know, only focusing on, for 30 days, only focusing on the balagha of the Qur'an. Balagha means the style of its message. The message is one thing, but the style, the way Allah uses the words, their miracle, the way Allah 
puts the verses together. He spent the whole month just doing that. Just to understand the rhetoric of the Quran. May Allah give us that tawfiq to do that as well. As a result, if you do this and you try to understand the orders in the Quran, the injunctions in the Quran and the prohibitions, then as a result, because Allah is giving us mercy at the same time, the soul will become purified. Tazkiyah to nafs happens by listening to the Quran as well. The senses become more sensitive, you become more particular. And one submits to the command of Allah by implementing them and by, pro by refraining from his prohibitions. This will be one of the benefits. That's why Allah says that إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ True believers are those whose hearts tremble when Allah is mentioned. Because as soon as Allah is mentioned, that's it. You've got so, so connected that it just makes the difference to you. And that's why Allah gives huge amounts of reward for these people. Allah has promised in Surah Al-Anfal verse 4 then, He says, لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ They have a high standing with their Lord, forgiveness and generous provision Allah will give them. Generous provision. Rizqun kareem. If you, have, if you have difficulty in life, in earning a living, start pondering the Quran, listening to the Quran with reflecting over the meaning. And this is a, this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, now this gets a bit more in, interactive. You can build on this. You don't have to all do this the first time if you're not used to doing this. Right? Because Alhamdulillah, in our community, many, many people read lots of Quran, Alhamdulillah, especially in Ramadan. We just have to add to that just some reflection. Very important. Then we know what Allah is saying directly. Right? Now, when you hear a verse of mercy in the Quran, this is what the Prophet did all night. When he would hear a verse of mercy, we should ask for it. When there's a verse of mercy, Ya Allah, give me mercy. And you should rejoice. When one hears a verse of punishment, then we should actually sense that and feel that. So one should tremble in fear and seek protection from it. That's how you interact with the Quran. That's how you interact with the Quran. When one hears a verse about Allah's flawlessness, that He has got no defect, He's perfect, we should declare that Allah is perfect. Allah knows He's perfect. It's nothing new that we're saying. But for us to say that is Iman. Allah loves it when somebody praises Him and when somebody recognizes Him. Say that there was a person in hellfire, Muslim, who was being punished. After one punishment, he said to the angels, I think, he said, didn't Allah say that uh, Allah will do this when this happens? Immediately Allah says, get this guy out because he knows me. Allah just wants us to know him because that's why he's created us. And the Quran is the book for knowing Allah. That, that, that's the main thing. <laughs> then when you see a dua, and a supplication in the Quran. There's many du'as in the Quran. Rabbana la tuziq qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma. He should implore and beg Allah. Now, where, if there's a verse seeking forgiveness in the Quran, then he should seek forgiveness and repent. Right? If there's a verse of repentance, he should say, I'm coming back to you, Allah, in full remorse. When one hears a verse in which the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned multiple times in the Qur'an. Send blessings on the Prophet ﷺ. Especially when you come across the verse in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 56. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسوله وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه so, this is the way to interact with the Qur'an. And you do it slowly, you find a dua, you make dua, and so on. Thereafter that, there's specific duas that are mentioned in some parts in the Qur'an. Like in Surah Al-Rahman, you know when you hear, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which means, which then of your Lord's blessings do you both deny? So there, what should we be saying? Do you guys, somebody knows? What's, what's the response to that? وَلَا بِشَيْءٍ مِّن نِعَمِكَ رَبَّنَا نُكَذِّبِ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدِ Now that might be a bit of a, a, a lot to memorize in Arabic, but this is what it means. So you can say it in any language. We do not deny any of your blessings. 
our Lord. All praise belongs to you. So every time Fabi Ayya Rabbikuma Tukadhiban is being recited, that's why we say we don't deny any of your blessing because Allah is saying, Which of your Lord's blessings are you denying? We don't deny any of them. We want to free ourselves from this guilt. Then there's another verse in Surah Al Jathiyah, verse 6, where Allah says, Fabi Ayy Hadithim Ba'd Allahi wa Ayatihi Yu'minun. This is a very powerful verse. It means Allah is asking, which words, which discourse after Allah and His revelations will they believe in? If they can't believe in this, what are they going to believe in? Nothing. They can't believe in anything. So there we want to say, Aman to Billah. I believe in Allah. So I'm one of those who believe. That's the way to react and reflect and interact with the Quran. Of course, when the verses of sajda, of uh, prostration, they're recited, we need to go into sajda. So preferably straight away. But sometimes you might be in a car, you can't prostrate. Or somewhere else, then you remember and do it later. It doesn't get cancelled. The only prostration, if you don't do it, gets cancelled is the one if you do in Salat. So in Salat, if I do Qira'ah and I read Iqra' Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq, and I don't do the Sajda in the Salat, I can't do it outside. But outside Sajdas you can do even after a year. So get them done. Marathon sajdas, even if you've got hundreds to do, just, just get them done. Why? Because you know these verses that we do, and especially in Ramadan, if you're finishing the Quran, you're going to see these quite often. What happens is those verses, because we don't know the meaning, we don't know why, the, why we, it says something like, yes, judun, or uh, yes, judu. It says something like, so we think, okay, but what exactly is going? Uh, what, what exactly is going on? What is exactly happening there is, it says, for example, uh, it says in one place, for Allah do they prostrate. Or why aren't those prostrating? Or they don't like to prostrate. So all of those places, we want to show we're prostrating. It's because that one is obligatory, actually. All the other responses, they're optional. But prostrating the 14 times, that's obligatory. That's necessary. Like, come on. Like, he's talking about prostration. You don't even prostrate. So we need to prostrate. That's why we prostrate. May Allah give us the tawfiq not to miss any of our prostrations. Okay. Number five, the fifth etiquette of listening to the Qur'an is one should cry. Now remember, you, you, as you can see, these are all maybe higher level. One day, inshallah, we can also cry. With the meaning, you can easily cry with the Qur'an. You just have to soften your heart and open your heart and you'll see you can easily cry with the Qur'an. You'll find something to cry about. And you know those people who, who, can, who cry easily, they're very emotional. And they're crying for small, small things for no reason. They're wasting their tears. When they... When they find that they are feeling emotional, open the Qur'an and find something worthwhile to cry about and your tears will be valuable. Otherwise, you're just crying for free and wasting your tears. A lot of sisters have, uh, you know, a lot of people are sensitive. Sometimes more sisters are sensitive like this. They cry about small, small things for nothing. And they feel bad about it. They should start crying for the Qur'an and inshallah, they'll strengthen their heart as well. If you can't cry, then force yourself to cry or... Try to make it look like you're crying. Maybe Allah will accept that. One should also accompany his reading with a sense of melancholy and humility. It's this feeling of longing and brokenness and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the state that we need to have. Right? And inshallah, if somebody does that, the crying will come as a result. You have to open the heart. You say, why can't I cry? It's because you have to open the heart. It might take a long, it might take a while for the first time to do that. The way to bring about this state is to ponder on the Quran's admonitions and threats. He should then consider his own obedience of its injunctions and prohibition. Like, how much am I doing? Allah is telling me to do this, but am I doing it fully? And then you'll see that you'll... Uh, every human at the core has this aspect of gratitude. There's some people, they're very ungrateful to other people. The reason is that they just start trying to act tough and they've kind of veiled themselves, they veil their inner self. One day, when they understand, when everything breaks around, they'll realize who really they should have been grateful to. Because it's there in the human being. Human beings have gratitude that can be brought up. Otherwise, we're going to be ungrateful. So let that gratitude come out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, he will certainly grieve and cry. If it does not cause one sadness or tears, as it should do for those of pure hearts, he should then cry for another reason. 
He should cry due to the absence of sadness and tears. He should cry and lament over his that Why can't I cry? He should make himself cry for that reason, since that is a more severe cal- calamity and tribulation. The most knowledgeable of people are those who have the most awe of Allah. Because why are they the most knowledgeable? Because you can only have more awe the more you know about Allah. Because He's got so many qualities and only qualities and multiple and infinite qualities that the more you know Him, the more you're going to be overawed. How great is Allah? Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That means the most knowledgeable one has to be the one who knows Allah most. For this reason, the Prophet ﷺ said, I am the most knowledgeable of Allah among you. There can't be anybody more than that. And the most in awe of him as well, because I know him more than anyone else. That's why, you know, you've heard the story on, of the Day of Judgment, where the Prophets are all going to be concerned, even though they've been forgiven. People are going to go to Adam salam and Ibrahim salam and Nuh salam. They're going to be saying, nafsi, nafsi. Go to so and so, go to so and so. Why? Because they know Allah. And they're worried. Out of respect, they're worried. Allah is not a tyrant that they're scared. But they just overall that I don't want to do anything that might get Allah to be upset with me. But I'll send you to somebody else. He's like, I can't help you, don't, don't ask me. No, go to Musa, Isa, Isa, Isa and go to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sending them in the right direction and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been given the special status to do that. Allah uh, shower his blessings upon him. That's why in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 83, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيدُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ and when they listen to what has been sent down to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will see their eyes overflowing with tears because they recognize the truth. These are the believers, and these are also some non-believers. They hated the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They hated the Deen. But they if they ever got if they ever caught themselves listening to the Quran, they couldn't help it. Omar before he became Muslim, he was once in the Haram. And the Prophet ﷺ at night time started reciting Al-Haqqatum al Surah Al-Haqqah And Umar was an enemy at that time He should have run away, right? He should have went, no He started enjoying and admiring But he couldn't do it openly So he hid himself behind the cloth of the Kaaba And he listened And I think that's when the seed of Iman came into his heart and This is the problem we we, we're not giving the message of the Qur'an to the others. Otherwise, it has to be powerful. It's very powerful. We need to live by the Qur'an and we need to um, let others uh, benefit from it. Imam Qurtubi, he mentions that the scholars have said that, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ wept, when he listened to Abdullah ibn Masood anhu, and he wept, his weeping was due to the immense gravity and severity of the meaning of that verse. How am I going to be? I'm going to be the witness on that day. <coughs> Allah speaks about us in the Quran as well. <coughs> Every one of us. You know, anybody who reads the Quran, they will find that they feel Allah is speaking to them directly. It's amazing. The way the Quran is written, it makes you seem like Allah is speaking to you, not to someone else. It's quite amazing in that sense. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ and the people of the first generation, the successors, Tabi'een, Tab'ut Tabi'een, they left a lofty example for us in the way they used to listen to the Quran. They used to observe majestic silence, beautiful etiquette, complete humility, full emotion, fear, and deliberation deep contemplation of its verses. Then a nuanced and detailed reflection of the, of the Quranic expressions and the subtle indications. They used to take heed of its injunctions and prohibitions and they used to learn from its admonitions. That's why they used to take years and years to become Hafiz of the Quran. Their hivs, our hivs here means just memorize. Their hivs included memorizing, understanding and practicing. 
That's why going and learning one verse of the Quran with full practice and everything is more valuable than major riches in this world. When reading and listening to the Quran, what one should have deep conviction that Allah Most High revealed this book. You can't let the shaitan create doubt in your mind. That Allah Most High revealed this book as a criterion between truth and falsehood, between misguidance and guidance. That this Quran guides the Ummah to the most honorable path and the noblest of causes and warns us from anything that will lead us astray from the path of righteousness and guidance. That, there you go. Allah's mercy is vast. His bounty is immense. And He does not reject the request of the one who asks Him. He does not disappoint the one who hopes for His mercy and does not let the reward of those who strive go to waste. So, those were the etiquettes of listening to the Qur'an. And as I said, Alhamdulillah, we read a lot of Qur'an. Let us just get a good translation. And there's multiple translations in all languages. And... Let us start with just one page a day. One page a day. We can read one Jews, two Jews, but let's at least reflect on one page and get ourselves accustomed to Allah's words. And you will see that your reciting afterwards will become much better. Because what will happen is that you will start to, um, you will remember some of what you, now instead of just taking any page, take the pages of the surahs you know. Start with the surahs, the last 10, 20 surahs. Let's start with Yasin. Carry on Surah Al-Mulk, Surah Al-Rahman verses and surahs that you usually know. Next time that is being recited, you're recited, you'll have a general meaning in your mind. And that will just increase it from the normal we read in Salat, insha'Allah. Allah give us a tawfiq. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak tiyat al-chalari wa ikram. Allahumma ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghif. Allahumma ya hannan ya mannan. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimeen. Jazallahu anna muhammadan ma huwa ahaluh. يا معدن الجود والكرم يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا خير المسؤولين ويا خير المعطين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام Oh Allah have mercy on us Oh Allah elevate us Oh Allah we ask for your generosity We ask for your mercy This is a month of mercy and generosity Oh Allah we ask you for this Oh Allah envelope us in your mercy Grant us from your benevolence Oh Allah grant us from your forgiveness Forgive us all of our wrongdoings, our transgressions and our sins. Oh Allah, forgive us and purify us. Oh Allah, make us like the day that our mothers gave us birth. Allow us to go from this world purified so that we don't have to suffer in the hereafter. Oh Allah, be pleased with us. Oh Allah, be pleased with us. Be happy with us. Be satisfied with us. Oh Allah, make us the way you want us to be. Oh Allah, elevate us by the Quran. Oh Allah, bless us from the Quran. Illuminate our lives through the Quran. Oh Allah, oh Allah, beautify us with the Quran. Beautify our hearts hearts with the Quran. Make the Quran a source of guidance for us, a source of light for us, a source of judgment for us, a source, a criterion for us. Oh Allah, allow us to abide by the Quran, to live by the Quran. Oh Allah, allow us to judge by the Quran, allow us to do everything by the Quran. Oh Allah, elevate us through the Quran, grant us Jannatul Firdaus through the Quran, grant us the highest stages of Paradise through the Quran, grant us closeness to you by, by your words, the Quran. Oh Allah, allow us to respect the Quran, to defend the Quran, to read the Quran and to read it correctly and to become of those who learn it and teach it. And your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said that the one, the best of you is the one who learns the Quran and who teaches it. Oh Allah, make us of them, make it, allow the Quran to remain in our children and our grandchildren and our progeny until the day of judgment, never for them to abandon in it, allow the Quran to be the guiding light for our entire generations until the day of judgment and preserve all of us and protect all of us. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to act on your faith and to be and to avoid the harams and to avoid the wrongs and make this Ramadan better than any Ramadan before it. O oh Allah, allow us to be more closer to you this month than we've ever been before. And any troubles and difficulties that we are having in front of us, any situations where we are being forced to commit haram or wrong or go in the wrong direction, O oh Allah, protect us from that, relieve us from that problem, protect our children from all of the difficulties and the challenges which are out there. O oh Allah, bless these masajid and O oh Allah, protect these masajid and O oh Allah, bless all of those who establish and who work in these masajid and who, uh, who, who do all of the work in these masajid and O oh Allah, allow them to rise to the challenges and to to be guided and uh, for their families to be blessed. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna wa salamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi. The point of a lecture 
is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind, you can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.